right guys, so when we get into the micro lab, there's a couple of things that need to be done before we can actually start with experiments. And one of these is making sure that our lab space is fully clean. So what we're going to do first is we're going to disinfect the actual surface and we're going to do this with a type of bleach. So we're gonna spray and disinfect our work surface. Now that our work surface is clean, we now need to make sure that we wash our hands. We want to make sure that we wash them very well, getting all the surfaces, because what we're going to be working on are aseptic techniques, and we don't want to contaminate our, our lab, our products, while just because we didn't wash our hands like we were supposed to. Now that our hands are washed, we want to get into the proper attire. So when we come into the lab, some safety things need to be done. We need to make sure that we have our closed toe shoes on. All right, so we need to make sure that we have shoes that are closed, they're not open toed. We're also going to make sure that we put on our lab coat. Now that our lab coat is on, we want to then make sure that we have our gloves. Okay, so we're going to put our gloves on. Anytime we go to leave the room, we're going to have to take our lab coat off, take our gloves off, and wash our hands. When we come back into the room, we're going to have to wash our hands, put our lab coat back on, put our gloves back on. Okay, so we do see that we don't want to cause any contamination outside of the lab or inside of the lab if at all possible. Another thing is we don't want to have any kind of loose clothing or loose type of jewelry or even hair in the way. All right, so notice that I have my hair up in a ponytail. That's to help get it out of the way so that, again, I don't get my hair into anything, as well as any jewelry or anything like that. We want to keep that stuff put away so we, again, do not contaminate it. All right, so let's put on our gloves. All right, so now that I have my gloves on, before I finish setting up the rest of the stuff I'm gonna need, I'm gonna turn on my incinerator. The incinerator is gonna take a little bit for it to heat up. So we wanna make sure that it gets turned on so that we can use it properly for sterilization. All right, so now let's talk about some of these aseptic type of techniques, some of the things that we should do and what we shouldn't do in the lab. When we work in the lab, there's gonna be times that you are going to be using some sort of type of tube that will have either a broth or a type of auger that's in it, and it comes in a tube like this. When we look at these particular tubes, we always wanna make sure that we mark the tube with our initials and also with whatever we're putting in to this particular tube, all right? And I also like my students to put their date, the date that they do this on, okay? And so we're gonna do this with a Sharpie. We would come in here and I'm gonna put my initials on it, okay? In this case, I'm going to use it and I'm gonna put in sterile water, so I'm just gonna put H2O, and the date Okay, so that information we found here, it can be written on the glass or like on the label like I did here, but do not just write it on the top because if this lid was to get lost or dissociated away from your sample, then we wouldn't necessarily know what sample is there. So we wanna make sure that the lid is not where we put our label, okay? Another one we're going to do is we're gonna do another broth with an aseptic transfer and we're gonna use a little paper disc all right, and so in this particular case, again, I'm going to put my initials. I'm gonna put disc on it so that I know. I mean, I'm gonna be able to tell because the disc will be in there, but also I'm gonna put the date, okay? So I've labeled them. That's how we're gonna label our tubes. 
On the other hand, there may be times that you are going to be using auger. When we're using an auger plate, and I picked this particular kind, this is a McConkie's auger. This particular auger has a color on it so that you could see, okay, where the auger was located here. We see that there's a lid and there's the plate, okay? When we are labeling this, we want to make sure that we put our name or our initials as well as our information on the actual plate, not the lid. So this is with the auger side up. I'm going to end up putting my initials, okay? And then I would put the date, okay? That way, guys, if again, something happens and the lid comes off and another lid's put on, the lid's not where the information is. The information is on the actual auger side. All right, so that's what we would do when we're labeling these. Another thing is when we're using aseptic techniques, we never want to utilize this where we take the lid off and put the lid on the table, okay? Because this could contaminate the lid. We don't want that to occur. So when we are actually going to be inoculating these types of things, when we talk about the plates, we're gonna always hold it and we're gonna potentially hold it open like this, all right, so where the lid is always going to be with the plate. It's not actually on the table, okay? Again, some ways to try to prevent contamination, okay? So this is what we're talking about with plates, and we'll get a little more into plates in one of our next videos. Now, another thing when we want to look at this, we don't want to contaminate our tubes either, and one way we could do that is by taking the lid off when we get ready to do some transfers and, again, laying it on the table, we don't want that even face up, things could get into that and it could cause contamination. So anytime we're going to be utilizing it, we wanna make sure we hold on to the lid. That way the lid can go straight back on to our test tube, all right? And again, not contaminating anything on our table as well as potentially contaminating our sample, all right? So let's talk about some aseptic transfers. We're going to do an aseptic transfer first with sterile water. We're going to do this using a pipette, okay? We're also going to end up doing a aseptic transfer of a paper disc, and we're going to utilize our forceps. Now, anytime we're using a tool like forceps or an inoculating loop, like we're going to see when we work with plates, we want to make sure that we sterilize them, and that's where the incinerator is going to come in. We would take something like our loop, and we would stick it in here, and we would leave it in until it turns red. Okay, so you're gonna leave the loop in there until it turns red, and then we're gonna pull it out. Now, we have to let this cool before we use it, and we're not going to let it cool by laying it down on the table to cool. That is going to contaminate it, and we have to sterilize it again. We're also not going to sterilize it and then blow on it, because again, that can contaminate it from your mouth. And we're not gonna sterilize it and then do this number to cool it off. Again, we are potentially contaminating our loop. So when we sterilize it and we wait till it turns red, we're going to then hold on to it until it cools. Then we're gonna utilize it on our plate. Now, the reason we need to wait till it cools is because if we don't, we can end up killing the bacteria as we transfer it over. Killing that bacteria means it's not gonna grow like we want it to, or it can distort it. It could also mess up our auger, okay, because it could burn through that auger. So we want to make sure that this is completely cooled. Because let me show you, if we put it in there and we let it heat, okay, and we get it to where it turns red, and we don't wait until it cools, you're going to end up hearing it where it makes a sizzle and it puts a hole through the auger. And you can actually see that here. See how it put a hole through the auger because it's still too hot. We don't want that to occur, okay? And we're also not gonna cool it by putting it on the edge and letting it cool. We're not gonna do that. Another way that people sometimes will try to cool these off is they'll end up doing this and then they will take their broth and they'll just stick it in the broth to let it cool. Okay, you can hear it going through that process of cooling off and a sizzling that takes place. But again, if there's already bacteria in here, it's now going to be dead or it's going to be hurt by that heat that you added there. All right, and so we don't want to do that either. Now, we are not going to use the loop today with this aseptic transfers. We're going to use the loop when we talk about different types of techniques on plates, which will be in the next video. 
So what we are going to do though, is we're going to look at the transfer when we look at water versus a disc. All right, so I have my sterile water in here. This is distilled water that was put in through the autoclave, so it is sterilized. And I'm going to use a sterile pipette. These pipettes are sterile. They have also gone through the autoclave and we're going to use them in order to do our transfer. So I'm gonna pull it down a little bit and I'm going to pick out one of the pipettes. Now, again, I do not want to lay this down. If I lay this down, it's no longer sterile. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pipette, I'm gonna put it into, okay, my little plunger that I have here. All right, and this is how I'm gonna transfer some of my fluid. Now I'm gonna get this ready, okay? And, because this is the one I have marked water, and I'm going to end up taking it out of this one. So again, I'm going to remove the lid. I want to be careful not to touch this top part with my pipette, so I'm gonna go down, and if it hits inside, it's okay. All right, and then I'm going to use my little plunger, and I'm going to suck up some of the water. Okay, take it out, put my lid back on, lay my water down. Okay, now again, I'm gonna take my lid off here. Again, being careful, I'm gonna put this in here, and then I'm going to release the water. Okay, and then I'm gonna screw my lid back on. All right, so now you can see now I'm done with this. And so since this was just water, I can lay it down here. However, there's going to be a special place where I will dispose of the pipettes that I have used. All right, that they, way they don't get reused, okay? But when we look here, you can see that liquid has been added, all right? Because this is what I started with and here I added the water. Now you'll also notice that it still appears clear. All right, it has a yellow tip to it, but you can still see through it. So far, this would still be an aseptic transfer because nothing's growing in here yet. However, I have to incubate this to make sure. All right, to see if my aseptic transfer was done correctly, I'm going to incubate this and we're gonna see if there's growth after 24 hours, okay? So I'm gonna clean up my area. I'm gonna go put my pipette in the correct place. Okay, so now I'm ready to do my transfer, okay, into my other one that's marked the disc, and I'm going to transfer one of these paper, sterilized paper discs into here. Again, this is going to be practicing the aseptic technique because later in the lab, you're gonna see that we're gonna use some of these type of discs when they're gonna have antibiotics in them or disinfectants in them, and we're gonna place them on auger plates. That's gonna be a kind of disc diffusion that we see, and it's gonna help us be able to calculate or to see how susceptible a bacteria is to a particular disinfectant, antiseptic, or antibiotic. So we're gonna practice this technique as well. So we're gonna take our forceps, also known as tweezers, and we're going to sterilize them. Again, we're gonna wait until they are red hot, and then we're going to pull them out. Now, these are gonna take a little bit longer to cool, okay? Because the metal is a lot thicker, and so it's gonna take longer to cool. And again, we don't want to utilize them when they are super hot, because it could end up burning our discs, or it could also denature an antibiotic or a disinfectant if it uses some sort of chemical, okay? So the heat could cause that chemical to no longer be useful. So we're gonna let these guys cool. Again, we're not gonna lay them down. We're not gonna blow on them. We're just going to hold them and we're going to let them cool. We are always gonna re-sterilize these after we're done. And so after we transfer the disc, we're gonna re-sterilize them. After that, we're gonna be done with the incinerator and we can then turn it off. Okay, so now we're gonna take our forceps. We are going to get our disc. Now in this particular case, we wanna be ready with both of these. Okay, and so because of that, I'm going to go ahead and use my pinky to pull this part off. I'm going to get ready. And here I'm going to take this part off. So I'm going to get my disc. I'm going to pull it out. And then I'm going to drop it in here. Okay. I'm then going to re-sterilize my forceps. 
and I'm going to place my lids. Okay, now when I wanna incubate something, whether or not I'm gonna see if it has the proper technique or if something's gonna grow, I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna tighten it and then I'm gonna do a half turn back open. This is because if something does start growing in here, a lot of times gas is produced and we don't want the lids to blow off. And so we want to give it a little bit of a release if gas is produced. Now, again, you can see that the disc is in here, okay? And we're gonna again see if it stays clear or if contamination did take place. All right, so once we're done in the lab, the next thing we need to do is we need to clean up our area. All right, and so we're gonna turn our incinerators off. We are going to end up placing our utensils and our tools back into our drawers, cleaning up our area as well as our um, marker. The stuff that we're gonna use to incubate are going to be on our tray. We're gonna then take those to the actual incubator. We're gonna re-disinfect our table. We're gonna also remove our gloves. And these are gonna go in the trash. And then we're gonna wash our hands. We're also gonna unplug the incinerator. We're not just going to turn it off. We're also gonna unplug it. And we're gonna remove our lab coat. The lab coat is going to stay in the lab. It's not going to go home with us, all right? And so we're gonna end up leaving it in the lab. All right, so a couple of things to follow up on when we were talking about our aseptic transfer and moving through, I incubated our tubes, the ones that we created with adding the sterile water to it and also the disc. And I wanted to show you that if aseptic technique is done properly, we would see that it's still got a clearish color to it. Now, when I say a clearish color, it means that it has a yellow tint due to the broth that we're using, but we see that it's translucent. We can see through it. It's not cloudy. So if we look here, you can see here in the water, when the water was added, but you can still see through the product. Okay, same thing here. When we added the disc, you can see it here at the bottom. It's still going to be what we would consider translucent versus this one, guys. Do you see how cloudy this is? This one actually has E. coli growing in it, all right? So we can see a big difference between these two types of broths, okay? This one obviously has something growing. This one does not, okay? So that gives us an idea of the whole idea of aseptic transfer. Now, there's a couple of other things with aseptic transfer when we're talking about looking at plates, but also with different types of tubes, whether there's a liquid version or if we also are going to have where it has the auger inside of it. We're going to talk a little bit about those techniques when we get to the labs that specifically talk about those. All right, so we talk about spread plates, um, when we talk about streak plates, when we look at slants, when we talk about those types of tubes, we'll look a little bit more at those aseptic transfers. But remember, the whole idea of an aseptic transfer is to make sure you're only transferring what you want to it. In these cases, we are gonna transfer bacteria to our plates, but we wanna make sure that that's the only bacteria that's growing, that it wasn't contaminated with something else. And that's why these aseptic techniques are so important and that we practice them before we actually start getting into a lab. So again, if you have any questions or concerns about aseptic transfers, please let me know. Mm -hmm.